Hello, my name is David Venables. I'm the president of Ask Bio Europe, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to Ask Bio and to provide an update on what has been a period of uh, rapid change and advancement in the company over the past 18 months. Um, so over the past 18 months, Ask Bio has acquired the synthetic biology and promote engineering company, Sympromix, here in, in Edinburgh. Uh, we've also acquired the Paris-based CNS gene therapy company Brain Vectus, which was founded by Natalie Cartier with a lead program in Huntington's disease. And we've acquired the CNS gene therapy company Brain Neurobio, BND, uh, based in Ohio and founded by Chris Bankowitz, which is already in the clinic for Parkinson's disease. We've also acquired the remaining interest in Viralgen, a joint venture um, CDMO that's based in San Sebastian, Spain, and we've established a new capsid research and development team in Heidelberg, Germany. And finally, as you're probably all aware, at the end of last year, AskBio itself was acquired by Bayer for four billion dollars. So it would be a significant underestimate to say that the last 12 months has been a pretty significant one and pretty significant period of change for, for AskBio. After all of this change, I'd uh, like to update you on our organizational development and the progress we're making in advancing gene therapy. So AskBio is now over 350 professionals and we operate in five countries. Um, we broadly have two businesses under our umbrella, the, uh, the therapeutics um, business and the CDMO business. So the CDMO business consisting of uh, viral gen, for GMP viral vector manufacture and Touchlight AAV, a, a joint venture for GMP doggy bone DNA manufacture. We were founded by Sheila McHale and Jude Samulski based on the early research of Jude in the cloning of AAV for therapeutic purposes. And we recently expanded that scientific leadership of the company with the, with, uh, the gene therapy veteran Kathy High joining us in January as president of therapeutics. We are thrilled uh, um, Dr. High has joined us and is bringing her unique leadership and insights to our team. We believe she will use her experience in gene therapy drug development to help advance our existing pipeline and identify new indications in the areas of genetic and complex acquired disorders. And as I also mentioned, we've also been joined in January by Chris Bankowitz. And Chris is a world-renowned expert in neuro-restorative medicine with successful translation of multiple gene therapies uh, into the clinic. As a company, we have a deep heritage in gene therapy and many firsts to our name. Um, Jude was the first to clone AAV for therapeutic purposes. And we were the first to deliver AAV intrathecally, uh, the first to, um, to treat DMD and Pompeii patients using AAV, and the first to deliver AAV directly to the brain. And today we're a clinical uh, therapeutic company. We're in the clinic for Pompeii disease, uh, in heart failure, and in Parkinson's disease. And we expect to be in the clinic in the coming months for additional indications of uh, limb girdle to eye, MMA and Huntington's disease. In addition, we have a diverse pipeline of additional preclinical programs uh, targeting rare monogenetic and pathway diseases. So clearly our big recent news was the acquisition of AskBio by Bayer, which closed towards the end of, uh, end of last year. And so what drove this and, and, and what took us down, down the route of, of being acquired? Well, we recognized that to bring our AAV therapeutics to market, we needed to bring on board a partner who shared our vision and a partner who could help propel us with resources, infrastructure, uh, financial, clout and a global reach. But most importantly for us, it needed to be a partner who would continue to fuel our collective scientific curiosity. And we found that partner in Bayer. This partnership joins our knowledge in AAV with 
Bayer's leading expertise in cardiovascular disease in clinical translation and market access. We'll also combine Bayer's medicinal chemistry expertise with our molecular biology to make our viral deliver delivery systems more effective. With the new cell and gene therapy group formed by Bayer, we'll explore and exploit opportunities to converge technologies in cell therapy, gene therapy, and gene editing, and accelerate our groundbreaking research. Together, we can more rapidly advance life-changing therapeutics to help patients. And importantly, Bayer will allow us to continue to operate as an innovative, entrepreneurial, and autonomous business unit with our own management structures. So enabling us to continue to do what we do best, and that's develop innovative technologies and translate those into the clinic. So we have a very strong team with great strength and depth in, in our scientific understanding of gene therapy. Our scientific enterprises are led by Jude Smolsky, the founder of ASPBio, and Michael Roberts, the founder of Sympromics. The therapeutic translational, translation and clinical execution are now led by Kathy High, who was CSO of Spark Therapeutics, by Chris Bankowitz, the founder of BNB, and Kanwen Zhang, who has led clinical development for Genzyme and Novartis. Our manufacturer is led by Tim Kelly, who is president and CEO of contract manufacturer KBI, and Josh Grieger, who developed our Pro10 manufacturing process. And we have business leadership through Sheila McHale, founder of Ask Bio, Javier Garcia, Kelly Sears, Tracy Dowling, and myself. At Ask Bio, we pride ourselves in the work we have, we have done to develop and build a comprehensive toolbox of technologies required for the successful development and translation of gene therapy products and in the process have generated over 800 patents covering broadly across the field. We've developed unique libraries of novel viral vectors based on library approaches, rational design, and bioinformatics and machine learning. And we've recently established a new Capsid Research and Engineering Group in Germany to complement the activities already ongoing in North Carolina. We continue to invest in and expand the synthetic promoter expression cassette design team in Edinburgh, which was brought into the company through the acquisition of Sympromics. And we continue to advance our tissue selective expression technology and our regulatable and on-off expression cassettes and small molecule controlled gene regulation. In partnership with Bayer, we're now engaged in the development of proprietary small molecule actuated gene regulation cassettes to complement the progress we had already made with FDA approved drugs. As we all know, manufacture is an ongoing challenge to the growth and development of gene therapy and control over manufacture and manufacturing processes is a critical success factor. At Ask Bio, we recognize this early and have invested heavily in the development of robust and scalable manufacturing processes and infrastructure. Our novel cost-effective manufacturing technologies open new market opportunities. Clinical and commercial scale GMP manufacturing capabilities support internal and contract needs with know-how to scale at the outset of each program while mitigating risk and maximizing successful regulatory outcomes. We continue to innovate in our Pro10 cell line development using bioinformatics learnings to increase yield, to, sell, to engineer cell lines to increase yield, learning from what has already been done by our predecessors in the monoclonal antibody world in Cho cell engineering. We have developed our own proprietary protein manufacturing process based on triple transfection of 293 cells in a chemically defined serum-free suspension system. And through this, we've achieved best-in-class best yields of 10 to the 17 purified vector genomes per 200 litre batch, and have now linearly scaled this up to 2000 litre batch size. 
Through our joint venture with Touchlight, we've established GMP supply of doggy bone DNA, a chemically synthesized alternative to microbially derived plasmid DNA. Doggy bone DNA has several advantages over microbially derived plasmid DNA. It has a shorter manufacturing cycle time of less than two weeks, and manufacture is rapidly scalable. It has fewer bacterial contaminants as it's based on chemical synthesis and therefore fewer concerns over the presence of extraneous microbial sequences in the final clinical product. It can also be manufactured at a lower cost than plasmid DNA. We've also developed inducible promoters that enable us to silence transgenes during manufacture. This can lead to yield improvements, particularly if the product of the transgene itself is either cytotoxic or cytostatic to the producer cell line. Our next generation production process is based on a stable package cell line, making use of our inducible promoters with capsid switching technology. This el eliminates the need for triple transfection and increases yields, thereby reducing cost of goods and enabling a further increase in batch size above 2000 liters. We also continue to innovate in cell line development, fine tuning the cell lines genetics to gain further yield improvements. We're continuing to invest in increasing our manufacturing capacity and have built three manufacturing facilities in Spain, a clinical grade GMP facility, a nine suite commercial supply facility, which is currently under construction and a doggy bone DNA GMP facility. Ask Bio's heritage of deep understanding of AAV biology gene therapy and bioinformatics means that we'll continue to invest in further innovation in the field. We believe innovation in manufacturing would continue to be necessary in order to support market expansion through both yield increases and cost of goods reductions, but also through increased understanding of product characterization, consistency and critical quality attributes. Manufacturing issues remain a too frequent and avoidable cause of clinical hold in gene therapy. Our next generation cell lines and engineered doggy bone DNA are key, trans are key drivers of this transition. Challenges of delivery remain, and so we continue to invest heavily in new bioinformatic, machine learning and rational design approaches to develop novel capsids particularly focusing on capsids to cross the blood-brain barrier to target kidney and lung and other tissues of interest. The other great challenge for gene therapy is that of repeat administration, and this is an area we're also investing in, exploring the potential for the same therapeutic to be re-administered over a lifetime. And in this space, we've launched collaborations with Selector and Squeeze and others. As will be clear from what I've touched on so far, we've built a significant platform and gene therapy toolbox based on in-house R&D, as well as through numerous acquisitions and collaborations. And this is not likely to change anytime soon. Our most re recent acquisition was that of Brain Neurotherapy Bio, BNB, led by neurology expert, Chris Bankowitz. This brought two clinical programs into Ask Bio. Parkinson's disease, which is enrolling patients with early to moderate stages of Parkinson's disease in the phase one study, and a multiple system atrophy, which expects soon to begin enrolling patients in the phase one study. We also recently announced that we have initiated a first in human dose escalation study with Selector Biosciences to evaluate mTOR in gene therapy which could be a significant first step towards overcoming some of the unwanted immune responses associated with gene therapy and support a redosing regimen. We also have collaborations in the gene editing space and are working with Editas in CNS indications. This is our therapeutic pipeline. We are already in the clinic with Pompeii and have treated two cohorts with a dose escalation. We're also in the clinic with congestive heart failure. 
and initiated a clinical trial just before COVID hit. And we're also in, cl in the clinic with Parkinson's disease through the BNB acquisition. And we expect to be in the clinic within the next 12 to 18 months with additional programs in limb girdle, muscular dystrophy 2i, MMA, and Huntington's disease. In our Pompeii trial, we have patients out for a year who remain off ERT. And in congestive heart failure, here we developed a capsid that targets the myocardium and detargets the liver. So far, we have just two data points as this trial has been restricted due to COVID. But both of those patients are now out, for, out to six months. And one patient has been reclassified from severe class three to class one, and a second patient reclassified from class three to class two, the classification based on improvements in various functional assessments. So in summary, AskBio is a platform gene therapy company that is developing programs rapidly towards the clinical setting. It's based on a legacy of gene therapy pioneers with some of the leading minds and scientists working within the company, individuals like Jude Samulski, Kathy High, Chris Bankowitz and others. And we continue to grow and develop that expertise and use it to, to build success in our R&D platform development programs and in the clinical setting. We have a comprehensive platform and toolbox that covers capsid engineering, and we continue to expand in that space, enhancer and promoter expression cassette engineering, and we continue to invest heavily in this area with exciting advancements in gene control and using small molecules as regulators and inducers of, of gene control. We have an extensive pipeline that is growing, developing therapeutics for rare and pathway diseases. And we're focused on transformative applications around the ability for repeat dosing and avoidance of neutralizing antibodies. And we have a manufacturing platform based on our Pro 10 HEC 293 derived scalable manufacturing process and our synthetic doggy bone DNA plasmid alternative, but additionally continue to in innovate in stable cell line and other cell line engineering advancements for increased yields. So that's our summary of, of the history or the story of AskBio. And, uh, and some of the significant changes we've seen over the past 18 months. Thank you for your time.